It is Friday, August 23rd, 2013. I'm Doug Hagman, co-host along with my son Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Folks, you're about to hear of the most amazing information, at least in my estimation. Our guest is on the line with us, Mr. Jim Lee. And folks, he'll post his website in the chat room. It is climateviewer.com. Um, go to his website. We're going to be talking about a number of things tonight, mainly Fukushima. Uh, Mr. Lee, how are you today? I am well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. The pleasure is all ours. You had your finger on the pulse of what was going on in Fukushima as well as many other things. So I'm going to turn it over to you and um, let you begin to tell us. Okay. Um for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Jim Lee. I made Climate Viewer 3D. It's a um, 3D application to track pollution and uh, other things. Um, I've been an activist for about two years now, and I have a website uh, that I do, you know, public service on. And uh, my stuff is completely free. Um, I it, like you all to check it out. Um, I, I cover uh, pollution, um, public relations. Um, mind control, uh, nuclear-related stuff. What I've seen as a common thread in uh, most activism is that people get sidetracked, and um, they tend to focus too much on um, things that are unprovable. Uh, they they tend to just believe things at face value, and uh, they don't really um, question things. Um, for, for those that remember Ronald Reagan, uh, he said, trust but verify. So um oh yeah. The, yeah that was a great quote by the way yeah. you've done, you've done a great uh you've done a great job with your website I just want to just want to add that throw that in there folks if you well not if you have the chance make the chance go to it's a uh, climateviewer.com and um climateviewer.com. I also for for some of the people who are familiar with me you may be scratching your head um I had at one time, I had four websites. It was uh, resonated.net, resonated.com, and that's spelled R-E-Z-N, the number 8-D, and that's .net and .com. And then I also made terraformingink.com, and that's Terraforming Incorporated, and I made that URL to talk about geoengineering, weather modification, chemtrails. So what I, what I had in the past was I had one website, Terraforming Inc., devoted to geoengineering, um, you know, all that sort of stuff, and then Resonated.com, which focused more on HARP, um, more sci-fi, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fried, um, you know, the electromagnetic radiation effects on uh, human health. Um, and then I had Resonated.net, which is my WordPress blog, and um, – you know, I, it was just so hectic. You know, I'm I'm married. I have a, a new you know child. She's three years old. She's amazing. And you know, to keep up with all of that and try to do this public service on a daily basis, it really gets frustrating at times. So to simplify my life, um, I went and tried to combine it all into one website. So now, if you know, if you see some of my old stuff out there, you might get a lot of broken links, but they're all now you know. Formed up like Voltron in Climate Viewer DB. <laughs> yeah, and, and I got confused because that, the the one website that you had, it, uh, I don't know if, if this is a couple of years ago, maybe now, uh, roughly, it was a, some time ago. It, it was it was a terraf uh, the, the one you mentioned. Yeah, terraforming. Uh, right. Okay, that's the one I think I had had originally come across and and, and looked at, but this Climate Viewer dot com climateviewer.com folks what a wealth of information and he's, i'll tell you man uh, jim you're one heck of a webmaster what a great what a, what a great you. site so for for the resources or lack thereof you certainly have put you've done a great job with with uh with what you've had to work with there's a lot there so we didn't mean to break your stride um but uh what, Go ahead. What about Fukushima, man? I, I, we got, we got to get right into Fukushima. Okay, do you mind? Okay, can I? Can yeah. I, can yeah. I, yeah let's you, talk about uh, it. Pull me yeah, all over the news. I, I, you know what? I think that that really this is the most understated ecological disaster. I mean, the most understated uh, uh, news story. This is the worst ecological disaster in the history of mankind. And why aren't we hearing a word about this? What's going on? 
Well, the, the answer is real simple, and um, I'm going to use a very simple term. Everybody's probably already heard it. Public relations. Public relations is um, the control of an idea or the perception of an idea. And, you know, many of you have heard perception is reality. Well, that is very true. Um, in, in the business world, in the military world, in the corporate world, perception management, public relations, um, propaganda, also sometimes referred to as slave speak, news speak, the control of words and images to make you perceive things in a certain light. When you're talking about something as large as the nuclear industry with such a dirty, long history, very, very strict perception management techniques need to be applied because, A, there's a lot of fear associated with you know mass releases. So in this scenario, the government thinks that you're too stupid to uh, take the information, deal with it properly, stay out of the rain, don't allow the radioactive fallout to get on you. You, you, they, you know, uh, and, and let me stop you there because some people – now, originally I thought, no, nah, maybe this wasn't going to be that bad. But as I hear people talk, I mean people in the know talk, um, the, what you're telling, what you're saying about the you know, state of the rain because the this nuclear material, I mean, I mean – this is true, isn't it? The contaminant. I mean, this is bad. It is bad. Um, you know, I started covering it March 2011 when it happened. And I put an article up and, you know, I got a lot of flack about it. <laughs> you know, people were calling me crazy. Um, I entitled it uh, Fukushima Raining Death on a State Near You. And uh, Good that is. <laughs> And, um, you know, at the time, I didn't really know about slave speak, and I didn't know about perception management techniques, shills, and sock puppets. And, you know, I took all this stuff at face value. I'm like, oh, man, these people are telling me that, oh, man, it's really nothing to worry about. You don't know crap about Becker rolls. Um, if, you, if you only knew what you're talking about, you'd realize how stupid you sounded. And I actually took my article down, and, you know, I sense, you know, having my – new, um, you know, perception management goggles on, went back and I put my article up. So it's dated like September, but um, even the article has all of the data you need to see. You know, there were several different models run, and you're going to see these from time to time on the website, um, websites and social media around the Internet. But in the end, they're just models. So what these, what, what a model is for the audience, a bunch of science guys sit in a room with a supercomputer they go get all of the atmospheric data they can find, so which way the wind was blowing, what the temperatures were, that sort of stuff. And then they try to figure out where the chemicals or atmospheric plume was blowing. So for those that don't know, um, I think it was March 12th. Let me, let me pull up. I had a slide here. I had if the I slide can. up. I just want to jump back. Uh, you said that uh, you didn't know about uh, shills. I think you forgot trolls too. Uh, that's yeah, a popular one. Um, so you let the uh, you know these people let, who are paid to to come out and discredit real information uh, get to you to the point where you took your article down. Oh yeah, it happens oh, to yeah, a lot of man. it happens to a lot of people, man. Um, oh, I, oh no, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, yeah. I understand. Um, but I've seen you know, people do that. Yeah, and, that, and that's. Uh, I would like to know if we have time. Um, what it was that you learned and, and what you uh, found out about yourself or your information or what was going on that made you understand better what was happening and, and uh, why you should have left the article up there, why you were right to begin with. Uh, yeah, that's whole what made you doubt like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I can actually sum it up real shortly. Um, you know, I've, I've dealt with this situation a lot of times where I tell people, I said, look, man, you're in a what's called a fear control state. Um if, if for those who've never heard this term before, just go Google it. It's called fear porn. Fear porn. Oh, I, I've been accused of that. Okay. And what what fear porn is? Fear has an addictive quality. It puts you in a flight or fight state. So you revert to your animal instincts. You don't think clearly. Your mount, your mind is clouded, and you don't judge things rationally. 
you're quick to, ju- to judge, you're quick to snap somebody's head off. When you're in a fear control state, it really makes you do things that you normally wouldn't do, and you're more likely to believe things even though they lack any evidence whatsoever. My example is that, um, and for those who don't have never heard of this, Elenin um, happened a couple years ago, and there was this big story about this comet that was coming, and it was like it was the red kachina, the the you know worm wormwood from the Bible. So wormwood's on its way. It's going to swing around the the um, sun, and when it passes, it's a comet now. When it passes between the Earth and the sun, there's going to be a catastrophic earthquake on uh, the planet or a solar mass ejection like uh, the Carrington event, but much larger. So there were all these stories of doom and gloom backed up by tidbits of science. Now, I believed it hand over fist. I scared my wife half to death. I, you know, even contemplated moving like some of the, you know, less fortunate people who actually did move um, did during that time. And in the end, I said, it just, there's just not enough evidence for me to act on this, but holy crap. And when nothing happened, I said to myself, how did this happen to me? And I was mad. I was very, very mad. I was mad at myself. I was mad at all. All the people who had uh, tricked me, and some of them have very big names, and a lot of people subscribe to their websites. But, you know, these people, they prey on your fear, and they prey on your inability to see the deceptions that they use. And people who are trying to deceive you, they really only have one way to do that, and that's to lie to you. And if someone is lying to you, you know that they are trying to manipulate you. And if they're trying to manipulate you, you had better ask yourself why. And if you don't do that every single day with every single conversation you have, including every conversation you you know watch on television, then you are going to be tricked by perception managers, public relations, advertisers. Some people call them mad men. <laughs> These mad men, they, they control our minds on a daily basis. They are twisting our beliefs. We have no morals left. And it's all because of their subtle interjections. You know, I tell my wife regularly that watching uh, Law and Order is just as bad as you know being in a war zone because what happens is when you see some young woman brutally raped on television in your home, you have the same animal tendency to want to protect her if you're a man. And I'm not trying to be sexist at all. This is just ingrained in us. You have this tendency to want to protect her, and there's nothing you can do. So you've been brought to this point where your heart is racing. You have hormones going off in your body, and you're left with that. There is no release. There is no release whatsoever. It builds up in you. So this occurs daily, and it becomes becomes a desensitizing thing. So that we're all now beaten down. And that's that fear, uncertainty, doubt, FUD, as it's called. Um, That's where that comes into play. Once you start to get into this fear, uncertainty, doubt, you start to latch out to just grab onto anything to get out of the hole. Please, something be true. But every root you grab comes loose and you fall back in the hole. And you don't know why, and that's because you can't see the root that's going to actually get you out of the hole. You're too busy believing all the other little pieces of yarn are actually roots that are strong. But they're just going to make it. That's wonderful. That's a great explanation. That's a great explanation, yeah. What happened to me with Ellen is, after I learned these techniques, I had a gentleman point out this article called The Anatomy of Slave Speak. And I read it, and it really just blew my mind. And then I put together this article, the the one that you guys have linked on your blog, um, the public relations page, where I kind of linked you know, what he had done to other things I had realized in my research and then put them all into one big basket. What it boils down to is there is a war on the Internet, and most people don't know this. Where is that quote? Michael Dell the uh, pres- or from Dell Computers, um, he said, the Internet is a weapon just sitting there on the table. Either you pick it up or your competitor will. Interesting. And Wow. Think about that. I could read you a hundred more about cyber warfare um, and, and all of the inner workings of um, 
you know, uh, social engineering, some of those Psychological terms. Psychological warfare, yeah. Yeah, psyops, um, that's another one. Um, in the military, there, I've got this one. It's called the Intelligence Science Board Study on Adducing Information. And it goes through things, you know, like mechanical detection, you know, how to how to see if somebody's lying. And then, you know, how um, we can better learn to, you know, really pull the truth out of a person. But what it really boils down to is, you know, there's people's perceptions and there's reputations. And you, you probably all have heard of reputation.com by now. But um, Ben Franklin said, glass, china, and reputation are easily cracked and never well mended. I like that. So, and, and how true is that? Yeah. yeah. So, wow. uh, you know, and, and Warren Buffett said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. Now, you think about th the, the fact that, and I'm just going to throw a big name out there, companies like Monsanto have hired, you know, Blackwater Security, XE Corp, Kraft, whatever it's called now. Um, these are ex-military, you know, soldiers. And these are, you know, intelligence operatives who now work for the private industry, which happens to be the the, the nation's largest private industry. Now, during the WikiLeaks documents, they found out that the State Department was threatening activists in France who did not want genetically modified food there, and they put together a hit list. Not hit as in like kill, hit as in let's target these people online and attack them with shills, sock puppets, trolls. Now, this was in the WikiLeaks documents. What's even more important is as a result of WikiLeaks, Hunt and Williams – hired H.B. Gary, uh, Palantir, Barrico, a couple other defense contractors in America to discredit everybody associated with it. There's documents out there that show them specifically targeting Glenn Greenwald. He's a reporter. This is a U.S. military defense contractor attacking a private citizen of another country who's a reporter. These are <laughs> This is perception management at the high end. Now we go back full circle to Fukushima. Um, Hattrick Penry has got the best article I've seen on it, um, and it's called Something Wicked This Way Comes, The Story of Plumegate, the World's Largest Provable Cover-Up. Love the title, Hattrick. If you go through this thing, what you're going to see is government officials sending emails between each other, and they're saying, <laughs> hey, bud, um, this is being recorded. Uh, let me call you later, and I'll tell you what's really going on. You'll see things like, hey, I just found out that NOAA has a model of the radiation plume going over Tokyo, and the other guy going, we got to get that off the Internet as fast as possible and get ahead of this. You'll see them passing out potassium iodide pills you know, amongst themselves. Meanwhile, Barack Obama's on TV saying, I've been assured that no radioactive chemicals are going to be deposited in America. There's nothing to worry about. Yeah, Jim, I want to uh, ask you, the initial coverage of Fukushima, people, uh, most people, I'm included, didn't have a, a good scientific mind. I, I understood, uh, you know, what the basics of uh, nuclear power plants, but I knew something was way off when, when this thing happened. And I remember my dad asked me, he said, you know, how, are we going to have to start taking potassium iodide pills? And I said, yeah, we probably should. And But the media was uh, quiet about it. People didn't know what to think, what to say, so they were quiet about it. They they tried to say it was, you know, they, they compared it to uh, Chernobyl, saying Chernobyl was the worst nuclear disaster. And today was today's the first day I think I, see, I saw a BBC had an article on, I mean, many alternative and mainstream internet sites have these articles up today about Fukushima. Now, what, we're two and a half years away from the initial uh, blast. What was the problem? Why, were, why weren't the alarm bells you know, being rung when this initially happened, when the power plants exploded, when the fuel rods because were sent into the oceans? Because TEVCO didn't even admit it for the first two months. So it, it, okay, wow. Or the, the or the Japanese government for the first two months, while while all the activists of the world and you guys can 
Everybody needs to go do this right now. Go to carboncapturereport.com, I believe it is. Do Google carbon capture report, all one word. It's called the carbon capture report. Click on it. When you get there, click nuclear. Scroll down, you're going to see a bar. And at March 11, 2011, you're going to see a chart that goes off the, you know, just through the roof. That was all of us, <laughs> us, us really, you know, just nosy guys on the internet, the dorks, the geeks, the people like me. That you know, we got Twitter, and you know, I'm on YouTube, and I, you know, I talk to people, and you know, I, you cannot, you know, poop on the internet without somebody emailing me about it. Um, and when Fukushima went off, we all were having a conniption. You know, we were like, whoa, what? somebody's got the haste. You know, we're like sending, tweeting to CNN and NBC. Like, they care, you know, like they even are going to respond. But, you know, as a month, the first month went on, the hydrogen explosion occurred. Um, I'm watching YouTube with all my homeboys, and literally there are people putting up videos. I went outside. It just rained. Um, I collected this water. It's only a pure rain sample, and they're showing the Geiger counter over top of it, and it's going off. Um, from what I understood, the EPA radnet, like, turned itself off or modified its numbers during that time. Also, um, they upped the safe radiation do dose during that period, and uh, Canada cut their monitors off, like, during, at one point. They just cut them off. <laughs> So it was just like, I mean, we were like in the twilight zone, you know, all the activists. And, um, you know, it, we thought that, you know, nothing was going to change. And sure enough, nothing has changed. We've wrote about it. People have, you know, Patrick Penry and Radchick was another one. They're both linked on climateviewer.com. Um, if you go to Climate Viewer, you just click on radiation and then click nuclear and then click uh Nucle uh, radiation monitor, and you'll see uh, both a link to Hattrick, uh, Penry, and Radcheck, uh, the pink and blue YouTube buttons. Um, they've been on it every single day for two years. And I, you know, I, I'm i not the greedy type. Like, I see a lot of people, they have their websites. They kind of only, you know, like people who like them. And, you know, if I see somebody who's devoted to a topic and I'm, you know, somewhat, you know, about that topic, I want them to go there because you're the expert on that. Um, and, you know, all respect to people like that, you know, I, I, I tend to look at the macro. I like to see how, how these topics inter you know, interact together. Um, so, you know, while I care about the nuclear industry and all that, I'm also, you know, fascinated by all these other topics. So I tend to go to these people as experts. Okay. But at the same time, when I go to them, I'm always wary that they could be confused. Or that they could, you know, have gotten bad information because, um, you know, I've read many, multiple times that one of the goals of good propaganda or, you know, disinfo is to insert um, false claims, over-exaggerated claims into an argument um, so that hopefully your opponent will resonate that. They'll echo it back out because now you've poisoned them. You, you see, if I give you some bad information and then it makes my company look bad, it makes me look real bad, but it isn't true, and it's provable that it isn't true, and then you don't do your homework and then you go and say that all over your YouTube channel, now you look an idiot because you didn't do your homework and you fell for it. That's a that's a very common tactic. Um, well, I, I'm, let me ask this question right here because – we had uh, someone who sent an email. Now, uh, you've seen, I, I suspect you've seen the um, Fukushima radiation map in the Pacific. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, It might have had a NOAA insignia on it. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? The one you're referring to is commonly mistaken. Okay. Now, there, there are two different ones. I've seen... I've seen Six different models, most of them are three d and maybe three different images that are floating around right now the they're the ones that are by a s r limited those are legit that was a actual model of cesium being spread across the ocean um the one you're probably referring to that shows the entire Pacific Ocean coated in a rainbow color 
Correct. That that's the one. What's the legitimacy on that one? That is a tsunami height map. Isn't that so interesting? That is actually the wave height of the magnitude nine earthquake that caused the meltdown. So when when the earthquake happened, it's like taking a very large rock and throwing it in a pool. Because the ground was disturbed so heavily, you know, either the shelf underneath the water dropped a couple of feet. I don't know how it worked. But regardless, some large waves were generated, and they travel all the way across till they hit the shores on the other side. Tsunami alerts were, you know, given off, um, and that is the map of what they imagine it looked like. And a lot of people go around claiming that that is the, the radioactive spread. I even did for one for a short period of time. I had it on my article and um, somebody came to me, and they were like, hey, you know, moron, um, that's a tsunami map. And I was like, yeah, prove it. And then he did. <laughs> so I went, oh, whoops. So then I took it down, and I, you know, said, well, crap, now I need something to explain. You know, I need something to show how big it is, because I, now I have no visual reference. And then I went and I found all the real ones. So it made so, me do a little more homework, you know. Well, and, and that's a good thing. So, so the visual reference that you found – um, is, is it anywhere near? Does it look like anywhere near what that uh, in incorrectly in uh, referenced image? And, and folks, you know what I'm talking about. You know the map I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, is, is there is there anything? Is it close to that or 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 no? The reality of the situation is this, and I'm just trying to be realistic here. A, we don't know what the total number, you know, becquerels per liter were coming out. And we don't know what the chemical composition of those, I mean, how much of it was cesium, strontium, tritium, xenon. Um, we don't know, okay, too many variables. So, first of all, we'll never know. Um, second of all, um, since we don't know the total numbers, and, I mean, the last I heard it was like 300 million gallons per day were coming out of there. So who knows? Um, but the, the the bottom line is this. I want people to understand what cesium is, first of all. Okay. Um, cesium is cesium-137. It comes from the fuel rods. It is the most abundant leftover from a nuclear meltdown. It has a 30-year half-life. For those who don't know what a half-life is, radioactivity is measured in a number, and the half-life means that if the number is 100, in whatever the half-life is, say it's 30 years here, in 30 years, its power will now be 50. In another 30 years, its power will be 25. And then in another 30 years, you get the point. Right. Um, so it means that every 30 years, it becomes half the power it was. Typically, cesium-137 lasts 180 to 300 years. About, uh, about my lifespan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, unless we all become robots, but whatever. Um, it is completely water soluble, meaning that it melts in water, and it's a macronutrient which mimics potassium. Now, macronutrient. What does that mean? In the ocean, it's going to be absorbed by the smallest creatures first. You know, plankton. I don't know. Something's going to eat it, and it's going to get into their bodies. And then a fish is going to eat the plankton, and then a shark is going to eat the, you know, fish, and then we eat the shark. That's called bioaccumulation. And what that means is, it starts out at the smallest organisms, plants, corn, milk, meat, and as it goes up the food chain, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. An example of this in the past is DDT. Go look it up. Um, cesium does the same thing. So, whereas there's not going to be a lot of death at first, it is uh, deposited all over America. At least most of the the left coast is coated in it. Um, I've heard some horror stories, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use speculation on air. Um, but the bottom line is it's going to be there for a very long time. If it is if it is truly there, and I mean, you know, by everybody's radiation meters and, you know, by the models that I've seen, uh, Nilo dot, um, uh, I've got all the links on my article. You can go look at it. It's on Climate Viewer. Uh, click on the radiation monitor. Um, right. you, can, you can see all the, the details there of these different models that were done, 
and they all point towards, you know, the president lied to us. Sorry, Obama. There was a reason to be concerned. Um, in the Chernobyl accident back in the 80s, um, they they issued, you know, warnings to stay out of the rain in Oregon. Okay? And Chernobyl was way further inland than Japan. Right. And a lot less, well, a lot less uh, troublesome or a lot less of a uh, of a disaster is is that a true statement a lot less of a disaster than fukushima i've heard it both ways at this point but it it's completely speculation nobody the the bottom line is this in a perception management world you've got a billion trillion dollar industry okay you've got the world's largest discussion climate change going on and they're trying to spin nuclear fuel as green energy and then I hear them, you know, saying this stuff about got to have more nukes and got to drill some more. And I've seen the dirty side of these industries. That's what Climate Viewer is about. I I cover the things that nobody wants to talk about, like the Bayou Corn sinkhole. Um, you know, things where communities were destroyed because of industry that did not care how much it polluted the ground. Um, if anybody's seen the Lorax, you know, I'm generally and I speak for the trees. Um, and that's why I made all this. You know, I, I feel like, you know, when, before, before my daughter was born, I, I worshiped war. I thought it was cool. I said, America, awesome. Um, we're, you know, we kick butt. And I realized afterwards, I said, you know, that's kind of a mean attitude. Now I got this girl, I can't, you know, be mean. Um, and I started looking at how bad things were and it overwhelmed me very quickly. So I made a 3d map. It's a Google Earth. Uh, I used this KML thing so that I could put dots on the map. And I just started putting dots where I found, you know, really bad pollution stories. Like, wow, you know, their whole whole city is destroyed as a result of this one corporation. It's amazing. Um, and then I found out about the EPA Superfund sites. Turns out they're everywhere. Um, there are these toxic holes all around America. And then you, you find out about, like, the Simi Valley nuclear, you know, the rocket dying systems had illegal – Nuclear power plant leaking everywhere. It's a super fun site now. Um, you know the Hanford nuclear site. It's leaking today. It's leaking right now. It was just announced about an hour ago. Go look it up. Um, and there's an emergency over there. So um, a couple hours prior to the show, there was an emergency um, at the uh, Omaha plant. So um, you know they have really high numbers of gamma radiation. The bottom line is this. You know I live in South Carolina. I'm near the Savannah River nuclear site. Um, there is, there's really no protection whatsoever in America. And that's what concerns me. Um, they have these monitors as clearly shown in Hattrick Penry's documents. They can turn them off and on whenever they want because God forbid they go off and tell the truth. What would you people do? You're stupid. You're not to be trusted. You might riot. Oh my God. People might go and, you know, Steal a bunch of, uh, you know, rebreathers out of a hardware store and riot everywhere. So they think that you're too stupid to deal with it yourself. I think Patrick Henry would disagree. That's where we are. You know, we're in a society where everybody thinks that, you know, the government's going to save them when their time is down. Um, there's no personal responsibility. The families teach nothing. Uh, religion is mocked. It's a, it's a real sad state where we really don't have anything to fall back on. And... Unless people start to see, and I go back to slave speak and perception management, unless people start to see that in almost every case where human society goes to make progress, there are going to be those who are in power who do not want that change. The nuclear industry is definitely that. It's a dirty, dirty industry. The, the pollution that it creates is going to be with us for thousands and thousands of years. When these accidents occur, the places are uninhabitable or ever. Okay. Now, a, a okay. thousand years from now, they may be able to come up with some technology to change that, but that ain't today. The answer to a dream as old as man himself, a giant of limitless power at man's command. A particle so infinitely small that it takes over a hundred billion billion atoms to make up the head of a pin. 